Be honest, don't lie. Is there anything better in life than playing an old school sports game with your buddy? Sex, Frank? Uh... I mean seriously, one of the best things about retro sports games is the simplicity of it all. Back then, developers had to place their emphasis on gameplay over graphics because, let's face it, during the 80s and the early 90s, they only had so much to work with. The same holds true for RBI Baseball on the NES. 8-bit graphics, but non-stop arcade goodness. Sure, it's no MLB The Show 24, but the graphics are actually not that bad for a 1988 release. I mean, look at Doc Gooden for Christ's sakes. God damn, they nailed it! Spot on like a fucking Dalmatian on a fire truck. Seriously, I'm not even joking. I honestly can't even tell them apart. Who's the real Dr. K here? Ugh, I mean, come on, Jesus Christ. God forbid they squeeze an extra ounce of memory from the circuit board and do a palette swap to reflect the person in real life. Now batting number 25 for the San Francisco Giants, Barry Bonds. <sighs> Funny how every time a new game console came out, we always told ourselves, my god, these graphics are insane. They're so realistic. How can they get any better? And every six to nine years, we were proven wrong. Anyways. RBI Baseball on the NES is a classic though, an all-time favorite among NES fans, and for a good reason too. It's the definition of a pick-up-and-play game that anyone can enjoy. I mean, it's two buttons and a D-pad. It's not like we're talking quantum physics here. Honestly, there is really no point in even going too in-depth about this game because, let's face it, it's an NES sports game at the end of the day. But it's a good one too. It might not be the best game on the NES. In my opinion, that probably goes to baseball stars, but it might be your favorite. The controls in the camera view are good, so that's a huge plus. Pitching is simple where you can just control the ball with your D-pad. Come on, here we go, bases loaded. Yes! Fielding is not that bad, and thank God they did the classic you can throw the ball to the base based on the position of the diamond on the D-pad. Up is second base, down is home, left is third, right is first. It's as simple as they come. Fielding the ball might be the biggest weakness in this game in my opinion, but it's actually not that bad. I mean, look at this. Ooh, alright, I got this, I got this. Come on, get it. Ah, oh, shit. Come on. Oh, come on, man, what the hell? Hi, I'm looking for Molly, because you keep fucking rolling, will you stop? Batting is simple too, but that's the fun of the game. You gotta rely on your NES reflexes. Come on, you tubby bitch. Throw me a meatball. There it is. It's out of here. Pasta la vista, baby. I actually looked it up, and RBI Baseball was the first console game licensed by the Major League Baseball Players Association and to use the actual players' names. I actually didn't know that. That's a pretty cool trivia question if you think about it. Hey, if you ever make it to Jeopardy, maybe they'll ask that question. I can just picture it now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I'll take I've never had sex before for 2000, Alex. On Forge, it wasn't licensed by Major League itself, so you're not going to see any team names or logos, but whatever, though. Any guy with a sack knows that Boston is the Red Sox, San Fran is the Giants, and Houston is the Astros. Now, the game only has eight teams in which the MLB counterparts were the first place teams in each division in 1986. The Boston Red Sox, California Angels, Houston Astros, and the New York Mets, as well as the 1987 season, the Detroit Tigers, Minnesota Twins, St. Louis Cardinals, blah, 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 San Francisco Giants, you get it. Only eight teams, huh? Must have been lacking in the memory department. Well, I guess that explains why Doc Gooden looks like my thighs in February. But as a Mets fan, I love the fact that my 1986 Mets are in this game. The last time they won a championship as of the making of this video. God damn the Mets suck. The game actually has two all-star teams, which has veterans such as George Brett and Mike Schmidt. Pretty cool. And they also have new rookies like Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco. A Jose Canseco bat! But this game does have depth to it. Don't be fooled, it's not that bare bones. Each player has different capabilities in the game. At bat, players vary in ability to make contact with the ball as well as their base running speed. Last time I checked, I think Vince Coleman was the fastest guy in this game, but I'm not really sure, I'll have to look that up. But pitchers vary in their stamina as well, as well as how fast they throw and how they can control the ball when throwing it. Oh, and a pretty cool thing is that there's a mercy rule. If one team is ahead by 10 or more runs after a number of any completed innings, the game ends. I mean, let's face it, if you're up by 10, just turn the game off. 
Also, what's with this watch mode? Who the hell picks that? You're like that creepy weirdo guy that you had as a college roommate who would never leave the room when you brought your girl over. It's like, uh, dude, can you get the hell out of here? But overall, this game is awesome. It's so much fun. It's a timeless NES sports classic. This is actually a lot of people's favorite baseball game on the NES, and in general too, and honestly, I don't blame them. It's up there for me too. Sure, the graphics aren't the best, but it has it where it counts. It's fun as hell to play, and it's easy to play. The computer is actually a decent challenge, and it's even better playing with a buddy. On eBay, this game sells for like seven bucks. It's peanuts, so it's a no-brainer to pick up if you have an NES. Or hell, emulate it for all I care. Regardless, this game has a strong cult following, and if you've never played it before, you need to join in and see what it's all about.